Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Today we are the 8th of November 2022. Around the table we get myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, and Stefan Merle. We don't have Mark, Tim, or Bruno. Um, let's get started. So, as a reminder, last meeting was two weeks ago. As far as I can remember, yeah, uh, 25 of October. Let's get started with announcement. So the new weekly is uh, almost terminated as usual. The Docker container should be available since 10 minutes. Uh, I've triggered manually the builds on trusted CI. So base release is okay. Container image now available and rest of checklist item later today looks good do you have other announcements on your mm -hmm. side i don't either upcoming calendar next weekly should be uh next week i'm not totally sure because there is a security release next week and that will be thursday as far as i can tell so i don't know the scope of the security release so i can't tell if it's on the core or only plugins if it's only plugins then we should have the weekly as usual otherwise or uh, yeah, uh, if it's core, we will have a new weekly. So yeah, a weekly will be scheduled uh, Tuesday for sure. Next LTS is planned end of November, as far as I can tell. Uh, let me just double check on my agenda. I think it's around the 30th of November. The 2.375.1. Yes, last day of the month. Next major event, um, February for them. The CI/CD room has been accepted. So if you have any idea uh, to submit a talk, please do it. Um, so the CI/CD room will host a lot of, a bunch of talks around CI/CD as the main thematics. There is also Golang Dev Room. Uh, so expect some Jenkins contributor present there. So if you want to submit a subject, don't hesitate. You can submit a two person, uh, but don't wait too long if you have an idea. That is usually 3, 4 February 2023. In Brussels. Nothing uh, more for you? Let's get started. So that was a huge two weeks iteration. Um, first pattern, if my uh, if GitHub want to load on my machine, um, we had a lot of closed and open issue about people starting to ask for a password reset. I'm not sure which kind of event triggered that. Hello, GitHub. Is it only me that has issue with GitHub? Or is it my ISP? Let me check. You don't have sound issues with me? No. It's perfect. OK. So we had a lot of issues with sign up, login, people with issues. No, GitHub is not getting here neither. OK. It's very slow. OK. Um, let me open in advance all the issues then. So we already have on the backlog an help desk template for account recovery issue. Uh, the idea will be to add a special template when people open issues to help them because that's always the same pattern. People ask for a credential reset. We don't know which credential, which person. Uh, we don't know where did what did they try. So at least having a 
a template will be easier to close the issues if they don't provide the right information. Um, so thanks everyone involved on sending. Some never answer, so it's closed as no action. Some answer with issues uh, that allowed us uh, to, to fix element. So that was just for these tiny minor issues. Missing data doc metrics for the prod public gates AKS cluster. So now we have metrics. So that issues was closed because we saw some metrics appear last month, but in fact, we were missing a lot of metrics. There were error message due to um, uh, misconfig. No, so it was no, it wasn't misconfiguration. It was a change on AKS um, that dates since five, six months. And the data dog agent is run on each worker node and is contacting the local kubelet, which is the Kubernetes agent in charge of spawning pods and doing stuff. Um, the connection to the kubelet is using TLS. So we had we have to configure Datadog to mount the certificate authority to allow the Datadog client to contact in HTTP plus TLS without any issue. However, in the case of AKS, the only solution with Datadog is to disable TLS verification. There is, uh, which means it's encrypted, but there is no verification of the certification chain because the certificate presented by the kubelet doesn't have a SAN, a field SAN. I don't know why it's required. I haven't deep down, but uh, that's a, um, let's say a recommendation by both Microsoft and Datadog that say disable TLS for Datadog. So changing that and our metrics started to populate again. It's still encrypting the data inside the TLS using a kubelet, another kubelet certificate. So that means if you have a random pod, it cannot pass for the kubelet because there is a, sign, sign, a signing system with it. So no worries on that area. So that one allowed us to enable the Nginx integration that Hervé was working on. So thanks folks, because that one was quite tr tricky. Uh, remove PPC64 mentioned on CI Jenkins IO. Thanks Bruno, thanks Stefan for doing all that work. Uh, so now it's, it's easier and we don't have outdated things. Artifact download failed on agent using repo cache. Thanks a lot, Hervé, for taking care of the ACP uh, artifact caching proxy service, uh, especially with the early users. So thanks for fixing the issues. Access to NPM namespace, finally, it has been recovered. So giving us everything required for putting web components and whatever NPM library under a, a legit name. Thanks, Hervé, for that work and giving as well. Um, Alex Brandes did not have administration right on Jira, so I took care of archiving the modules. It's quite easy if you are Jira admin, you have to go on the administration, you select the Jenkins project and there is a list of components and there is a button archived for each. That's really easy. Uh, Windows ACI 11 agent broken because Git wasn't in the path. So it was fixed uh, less than one day after the issue was raised. However, we had to add uh, integration test to the image builder to ensure that that problem doesn't happen. So we might still see issues. We have to grow the integration test harness for these images, but now it has been fixed. Uh, there has been a request permission. So I think either Tim or Alex took care of that. More component archive. Twitter Jenkins release is now working again. Thanks, Hervé, for that work. That was a long and standing issue. So can you confirm it's a new system? Yeah, it's a new system that yes. we installed on the clusters, right? I'm using uh, RSS to Twitter uh, uh, repository. It's a Go application. It's running on hot public AATS uh, cluster. And uh, it's fetching uh, the RSS feed uh, every five minutes and publish a new tweet every cool. new week time. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice job. Really useful. And at least now 
the whole team can operate it instead of being locked to a special cloud account. I'll probably uh, do a look around uh, Twitter together, uh, GitHub Action, which allows uh, publishing tweets as code. Uh, I've discussed this with Mark and yeah, it seems Makes interesting. Sense. Absolutely. Cool. That that also has been a long running discussion as for uh, at least since four or five years. So that will be cool. Next issue, CI Jenkins IO does not have enough to, uh, so permission on the um, uh, missing repositories. So some repositories weren't allowed on the exhaustive list for the GitHub app, if I'm correct. So CI Jenkins IO using the GitHub app automatically generated and changing token wasn't allowed to fetch. It's not the only repository that mean, I mean, that happened. Sometimes it's weird and making us waste time. I don't know if we have an easy way that would mean having GitHub as code. We have an issue open for that, yeah. but it's not that yeah. easy. Uh, uh, I have to look into it. Uh, mm -hmm. On one of my to-do list, uh, I tend to. Hosting team onboarding. So thanks a lot, Hervé, for tracking that one. A big issue, upgrade to Kubernetes 1.23. So congratulations, folks. You were able to do it before end of October. So we weren't locked out on DigitalOcean. And it will be dropped. 1.22 is planned to be dropped in Amazon end of November. So nice timing. Uh, it was uh, quite uh, an easy one, especially in AWS. So great, great work on that one. Uh, and we can already start planning the next one. But I particularly appreciate the fact that both of you took uh, a lot of notes and feedback so we can benefit from our mistakes or learning each time. Really, uh, really useful. That absolutely changed the pace of the upgrades. We never had uh, such a pace. We, have, we are almost up to date to the latest available Kubernetes on our clouds. I'm quite proud of the team for that achievement, honestly. Not receiving reset account password email, another issues like the login issue. Crowding localization for locable resource. I assume it was treated by someone else. Okay. So no infrastructure task. Update center returning 404. So that one, uh, thanks, Daniel, he answered. The person was using um, an unofficial feature of the update center, which was during sometimes it was generating dynamic JSON for the update center index. Uh, Daniel gave, the, gave them the new official way with the documentation link. So nothing to do on our side and we were able to close. And one last password issue. Did I miss something that we finished that is not on that list? Nope. Okay, let's go to the work in progress then. Up. Okay, so uh, CI Jenkins IO stories is not handling pull requests. So multiple action there. First, um, the root cause seems to be um, missing permission on the GitHub app. I was able to discover that because I created a new um, um, a new a new job, and it was failing. And by looking at the logs, that was the main issue. However, I've mo I've removed the stories from the infra GitHub organization folder on CI Jenkins IO, and now there is a static multi-branch configuration on the folder website. That's a website not really tied to the infrastructure. It's a multi-branch, so it can be tuned to have different settings than the rest of the other websites, which wasn't possible with the infra settings. The less infra things we have on that automatic folder, the, the easier it will be to provide feature to the end users. Um, so mi ah, missing permission. Uh, new job location on CI Jenkins IO. And now the work in progress is on unifying the two pipelines. 
Right now we have a Jenkins file built by CI Jenkins IO and a Jenkins file whatever built by Infra CI. Thing is that we saw that pattern on the plugin health and some other repositories as well. Having two different pipelines uh, makes not visible anything that happened on the private Infra CI. So Infra CI should be, while well, it should only be used for continuous deployment. So the the tentative I'm doing is to have one single pipeline. The CI part will be done on CI Jenkins IO, and only the deployment part, it is the Docker push, should be done on Docker Infra. In real life, both controllers will do all the steps in parallel at the same time, except they will be using the same templates, the same tools, the same steps. So any issue on CI Jenkins IO will be visible on Infra. And infra CI should not be triggered with the pull request, only during build on the main branch. So less workload on infra CI and more visibility and actionable for the contributor publicly without requiring access to the VPN. If we are successful on that one, we can generalize the pattern to other. Um, the main pain point today, and that's why I spent some time on the Packer image, is that we are we have a custom container on Infra CI and we have our current Packer image on CI. So we had to transplant all the missing tools so both pipeline can do the same thing. Adding missing tools. Any question on this one? Okay. Login issue to be done. I mean, we are waiting for, I think Mark answered. I don't think we should spend time on that one. The person should answer or we will close it. Forget password, same issue. Windows agent on CI Jenkins IO disconnect prematurely. So sounds like there has been an issue, but it was on the acceptance test. Mark uh, logged in on the issue that it was testing for the Windows label but that label is not expected to be used. Might have been, but now we have Windows 2019. We have Windows on different areas. We have Windows with Maven 11, Windows with Maven and GDK 8. I mean, we have different. So that label should be removed, but we need to search for usages and adapt the acceptance test so that it map to reality. Yeah, but Mark that was... mean that one of those uh, um, node, the agent is not working properly. He, he got the label Windows and he got probably tons of other labels. But we haven't one. checked. We haven't checked the reason why it was failing. The acceptance test trying to spawn a Windows was failing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That could be okay. an error in the acceptance test. But good point. That's why I'm proposing to remove the Windows label. Because for sure, there might be a cloud template implementing it. If we remove it, then either we might have some hidden jobs or people doing word stuff since years with the Windows label. And then in that case, they will be waiting on build queue blocked. So then we can pull request the repository and change it. But yeah, um, the acceptance right. test wasn't testing the reality. That's the, the thing because Mark wasn't able to, to see the same behavior in real life use cases. Oh, okay. So incident should be closed because there wasn't really an incident, but only once either the acceptance test is fixed or the label windows is removed or both. No incident, but label windows to be removed, acceptance test to be updated. Does it make sense for both of you? Yes. Node.js missing on agents. So I did a change for the stories uh, uh, using, starting to use our custom container web builder. The same that was used on Infra CI. Um, we will have the same issue with the Packer image container that I plan to use as soon as possible as well. Thing is that Node.js must be loaded in the environment using SDF on Linux. I don't know why, but after that change, using a, starting to use ASDF, some of the whatever NPM command line tool, AGV, I think, they try to resolve Node.js from the Shebang user bin of, and it fails. 
I don't know why. Uh, so that need more diagnosis because that could be a reason for not installing Node.js using a SDF. I have so many uh, issues and a lot of people are doing a symbolic link between node location and syspath. Which is abs which defeats the purpose of do we agree? So that, that means stop installing Node.js with the SDF and using an official Node.js release. The reason of using a SDF on the Packer image is because it's it does a lot of things for us and it allows to have multiple versions installed at the same time, which now we need for Ruby. That's the only real requirement. For the rest, whether we use an SDF command, which means we install SDF, we install SDF plugin and install the line and set it as global and set the environment variable, or we do the five same step, download the correct version of whatever installer, run it, add the, the path to the environment variable and you're done. So there is no complexity difference between both. Sorry, uh, Stefan. We see you speaking, but we can't hear you. Oh. Is it only me? Oh. Sorry, forgot to unmute. But we will have only one version if we install manually. If we use mm -hmm. ASDF, we can install multiple versions and, and choose the right yes. path to use. The question is, version. why do we need multiple versions? Oh, I don't have any answer on that. I don't. Maybe we have reasons. Maybe because we want to test this version, but right now we don't. So that could be the way to solve that issue, okay. which is blocking the usage of Packer Images container for Node.js based builds. Um, also, there are alternatives like NVM. NVM is a, um, sorry. Uh, NVM is a tool that allows uh, to install different uh, Node.js version on the same path and switch from one to the other. Uh, worth asking Gavin and Tim on that topic and Alex, but Alex seems more a backend developer than front end developer. I don't know Herve, if you have any advice or points on that area. I know you have quite the experience on Node. Um... This question is, do we need the uh, question of Node? If not, we should install it with the official installer and don't, don't uh, bother uh, more a bit. OK, I propose we go that way. Install from official installer. First on docker-builder, then on packer images. Does it sound good for you? Pipeline step doc generator and backend extension indexer. So work is done, um, uh, but need to enable CI for public visibility. So same thing as the unifying the pipelines uh, that we have for story. We want external contributor when they change the code to have a public available CI. And only the full generation or at least the full uh, uh, upload to report Jenkins IO of the generated report should be in infra CI. Same as stories. Um, Stefan, you mentioned a few days ago that you were interested in uh, learning a bit more on Jenkins builds and pipeline stuff um, in a more advanced way because you, you know your way now, but that one is a uh, quite uh, edge case. Are you interested to help me on that one to learn no. a bit more on a real life example? Of course, with pleasure. Okay, so I will schedule time uh, with you. So we keep these issues on the line. Artifact caching proxy enable to deliver git changes Maven extension. Can you give us a status on this one, Harvey? Because I did not follow. Um, Mark uh, noticed two uh, two cases of error. The first one uh, was uh, Maven Central timeout, which we can't do a lot about. But the second one was indeed a problem with uh, the artificial proxy uh, on Azure. Okay. Uh, with uh, getaway timeout error. 
uh, looking at, at the dog logs, uh, we noticed uh, the error were only on uh, the Azure provider, none on the digital assembly provider, while uh, the repartition between them is uh, about uh, one third to two thirds, two thirds uh, for, for Azure. So we are suspecting it's the IP overlap problem we've got on Azure, which might be the cause. So I, I'm creating the new private KVTS uh, cluster uh, with Terraform right now to, to see if can, if it can solve this kind of problem. Makes sense. Thanks for the status. So, okay, um, uh, I'm. I thought it was another issue. Good. Prioritize the private cavities plus public. Publicates fix ups. Okay. Hello, Mark. Okay. So that will be an upcoming issue then later. Um, so if that's okay, Hervé can. Uh, can I let you add a comment with uh, that status on the issue so we can move that issue to the Jenkins Infra next because we have to solve the network issue now in order to solve the caching proxy uh, behavior. Sorry, can you repeat the uh, question? Can you add a comment on the issue? Yeah. Uh, 3221 explaining that we need to walk to the private gates and the link uh, the two issues. I think I if it's added a comment in this, uh, yeah, I'll, cool. uh, I'll check that. Maybe it's already done. If that's the case, that's perfect and nothing to do. But right now, we won't be able to walk here because it's blocked by we need to fix the IP overlap for sure now. We have measured it and seen with that ad hoc. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, next minor issue add an LDS template for account recovery issue because given the sudden peak of that kind of request we need it trying to help us at least that will be easier to close it if we don't have enough information yeah, um, on my to the list okay so you you keep taking care of this one cool that was the implicit I'll question i open a draft here for comment and improvement uh, Cool. From we'll open a draft open for feedbacks. Thanks. If you don't want, we can do it as well. No worries. Uh, just let us know. Backload of already built items in Q and CI Jenkins IO. So since the deployment of the incremental plugin on that issue, uh, we did not see more issues on CI Jenkins IO. Even though we restarted it twice since the installation, um, but no more ghost builds. So I've sent a message. So the thing is that we are using a version of the plugin, which is a pull request, which is not in line with the latest version of the plugin. So we will let the plugin maintainer find the solution. Uh, proposal is that we keep that until ne uh, next weekly team meeting, one one week more, because for sure we'll have restarts. And then we see. Uh, I propose even 16th of November, given the 15th will be security release. So most probably we will restart the controller to install whatever system within. So better to wait right after. So I propose that we don't have any work to do on that one. We move it on the backlog and we go back next week on this one. Sounds good for you? Yes. I will comment it then. So reintroduce artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. So I assume you gave us a status we, just before. Yes, uh, the free provider has, are running. I have to check why that doesn't seem to have any request uh, to the AWS one. Not sure why. Maybe it was just because uh, we didn't collect it as a correct metrics. So I haven't checked. Okay. Hervé, uh, 
what you... I don't think there is a particular issue since then. Uh, can you confirm, Mark, on the dozen or so plugin where it's activated? Uh, I've not seen any any further issues. I okay. I'll have to double check. Okay. So I propose we keep that one open and same we remove it from the next iteration because I don't see any action expected from you. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, what I can add uh, is also I've added some uh, improvement to the pipeline library. Uh, mm -hmm. First, we can define with an, a global uh, environment variable uh, which provider are available. So uh, we can, uh, for example, uh, disable the AWS one if it's out or if it's down. And I have also added uh, an health check with a simple curl to before using the provider to see if it's up. And, uh, if not, uh, it's uh, it fall back to repo that uh, Jenkins CI that all. To fall back to Frog if CP is down. And I also fixed. Uh, uh, CD error uh, on the Windows uh, part because I wasn't using the correct delimiter for the environment variable. It's percentage, percentage for Windows, not just solar. Every will start ugling, like it will grow green next time we will say PowerShell for sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Hervé. That was quite quite the effort. Congratulations on that one. Uh, next one, migrate key cloak database to Azure. Uh, Stefan, can you give us a status of this one, please? Uh, yes, I started to uh, uh, try a draft of uh, backup restore. And of course, there's tons of errors. So I need to make sure that the backup is full and not just partially. I think that the user I'm using for the backup doesn't have enough rights to get enough data into the backup, but that's brand new. So I'm working on it right now. Okay. Uh, so that means you already created the database, right? Yes. Okay. The destination new uh, database is created in the already existing uh, database instance that we, we buy in uh, Azure. Nice, so it's a flexible instance, so high availability yes. and stuff, and we already have no, database. No, really. we, we didn't uh, uh, set it, set the high availability. Okay. We but should remind. No. But... Okay, cool, thanks. Anything else on Keycloak? No. So it's work in progress, you are experimenting, and we expect next iteration to have a first test uh, from so time, and some timing to know uh, how to to do the switch because during that backup restore we will have mm -hmm. uh, a downtime. Scale down key cloak to zero replicas, <laughs> then migrate the data, then scale it up. We will have a downtime. Yes, but it's key cloak, so no worries. Yeah, <laughs> I like. It's not a public everything. facing service. I'm sorry. I will. I will, I will time it whatsoever. No problem. Uh, realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. So we had a meeting with Chief Rog last week, Mark and I. Uh, I will share the, the notes. So they still have to come back to us for the uh, repository migration from the current infrastructure the Chief Rog is run for us to the new SaaS service that provide a bit more metrics. They are late on that process due to human reasons, uh, but there will be an outage so the outage should span a few hours. So I told them um, if they need a whole day of outage, no problem. As soon as we know it early enough to let our user know, so we don't try a security release that day, of course. Uh, but uh, it's safer if they take their time uh, because that could be quite the, uh, the, the, the issue. So they told us, uh, they told us that they will keep, once migrated successfully, they will keep the old 
machine with its storage available for one month, which means at any moment, if it goes wrong, we can always fall back the, the domain name back to the old instance, at least during the few hours or days of, right after the migration. And also if we run any operation or if we lose any data on the new instance, we can always restore from the old instance. Um, Sagan, Mark and I were going to work on that topic. First, we need to write down things and to test some scenarios, uh, my, uh, some scenarios for the bandwidth uh, decrease. Uh, the idea is uh, see how we can um, how we can enable authentication. So Mark and Damien to write an act to find a proper path bandwidth. That's a top priority issue, like the top priority issue. Uh, that's why Mark and I are working. Uh, the second top priority is the IP overlap, which is still important and still is linked to GFROG bandwidth. Um, also, we will have to work on high availability LDAP, at least the read-only replica. Because by enabling authentication, that means we will add more service pressure and quality of service. So LDAP uh, won't accept the same maintenance windows as it used to have. So we will have to find a solution on that work. Uh, external DNS to the Kubernetes cluster with an ingress. Is there anyone interested in having the time to do it or should we move it back to the backlog? I think it can stay in the backlog. We don't have any immediate need for now. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have other new issues that we should talk about? Do you have new issues that arrived that are not the backlogs today? If GitHub want to work. Yeah. The, um... So when I started the um, private KVTS cluster. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we mentioned it that I forgot. Mm. Uh, that, that, that one. So this one, you have to put it uh, for the next. Yeah, I started it, so. Okay, so the plan, just a reminder, or maybe a note for Mark, because we discussed that uh, this morning. So right now we have prod publicates, which has the IP overlap, the production cluster, that also hosts ACP. And we have temp private cavities, which is a temporary private cluster where infra CI is running and only infra CI. So there are a bunch of services around. It needs an ingress controller, it needs uh, certificate stuff, so there are some side services. So the goal is first, we create a Terraform manage new Azure cluster named private gates. We migrate in FRACI first, and we can remove temp. Then we migrate all the services from the current prod public gates that should be on the private network. The main one being release.ci. Reason is that we don't want really CI to run on a public network, of course. Um, so that one could have impacts, but I don't think we will have a lot because the VPN right now is a big virtual machine that has access to both network for today. We also have a few services running inside prod public gates that should be moved to private area. Every bot, for instance, because they don't need in incoming request, they only to need to have egress. So this one should absolutely be on the private one, unless we want to define a category of Jenkins infra user that have access through a dedicated path to the public cluster. But at least release Grafana, Prometheus and infra should run on the private gates. That's the first mandatory step. 
The goal is to have a first Terraform manage Azure cluster because that's the last cloud that we don't manage with uh, Terraform. We already do it for Digital Ocean and Amazon. So Hervé started to work to prepare the work on this from this issue. Because once we will have created private gates and migrated everything, we can create the new public gates cluster that should be the replacement for prod public gates, except it should not have IP overlapping and it should be, let's say, uh, correct in terms of Azure recommendations. The current cluster, as a reminder, has been created four years ago by Olivier alone where Azure wasn't providing as much feature as today. Right now, Azure has changed a lot, so we might have to change some elements. One of the main security improvements in that area that Hervé pointed earlier today is, uh, as pointed by Tim a few months ago, we should stop using service principle, which is a kind of technical user system with a token that allows Kubernetes to uh, connect to the Azure API to auto scale, to mount volumes, to access other uh, Azure services. That's a, a kind of technical account, right, for the API. And a team told us there is a, a different system. I think it's an identity like the IAM system uh, on Amazon that avoids storing a token and rotating a token. It uses instance-based identity to identify. And that one is now using OpenID, so that's the same security level as uh, Amazon, as far as I can tell. So Hervé is currently experimenting all of this on the private cluster first. That means we will have outages first on Infra CI and in the future on release and all the other services when, when we will migrate them to the new cluster. Once everything is migrated and we don't have any more IP overlap, then we can go back to the uh, SCP. Yeah, so and, that, we, and, we, and we can monitor that it, everything is fine by, with the Datadog on, on ACP. Yes, absolutely. But we're already now, uh, Datadog is working because it pointed the network issues to us. Yeah, both, both are, are mutually telling us it's, it's not working, but then it's working. Absolutely. Hervé, any, any point to it? No. No. Cool. So Hervé le le leads that area, and we'll see uh, if we have uh, last minute issues on this one. Other new issues, new topic? I think that's already a lot. So Mark and I focus on the GFrog repo. Hervé focus on the new repository and the usual maintenance of ACP. Uh, and Stefan and I work, so once Stefan is uh, finished with the key clock migration, we will work on Jenkins pipeline. How, to, how can we have unified pipeline? One Jenkins file for project that will do the CI and pull request builds on CI Jenkins IO with visible outputs and actionable, and only do the deployment part on infra CI. That's all for me. Is there anything else you want to add, mention, discuss? Nope, okay, so we'll see each other the 15th of November. Uh, as a reminder in a wrap, the 11th of November is a banking day, it's national day. So I think Stefan, I and Hervé won't be working this Friday. <laughs> and we should do our best to make sure that you're not working this Friday. Thank you very much. And that can be a rainy day sometime. <laughs> is banking the in part of the EU. Here we are. So I'm stopping the recording and then the screen sharing. So first recording, see you next week. Bye.